Aloha, I'm Jim Hagerman, and this is my lab. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how the tube clon came about. It certainly wasn't easy, and there were quite a few steps along the way. It was not a linear path, and I had to create my neoclon pedal first. An op-amp based reconstruction of the famous clon frequency response and behavior. And let me make it clear. I am not doing a clone. I have never made a copy of anyone else's pedal and I never will. That's for other people to do. I'm only interested in creating something new. So I just developed an entirely new circuit optimized in a slightly different fashion. You do not need to make an exact copy to get the same sound as was shown brilliantly in a recent video by the Dan and Mick on that pedal show. Step one was to simulate the circuit so I could see inside. Pay attention to every node, discovering which components did what and which were important. Then I fully deconstructed the schematic such that I could rebuild it in a new and better way. You may have seen this basic block diagram before. Well, it's not quite correct. There is a mixing of low pass and clipping paths right after the input. A similar mixing of paths occur between clean output and clipping output. This is important. As we view the main portion of schematic, after input buffer, we can see the three signal paths before they get summed together. After studying many simulations, I realized the clean path has virtually no impact when gain is above 9 o'clock. At minimum gain, bandwidth is flat and sterile. Who needs that? Why waste your clon for flat response? Therefore, I made the decision that minimum gain in my pedal would equal the tonal response of a clon at 9 or 10 o'clock. That's where it becomes useful, optimizing guitar tonality to cut through a band mix. Boom! A big chunk of parts quickly eliminated. Remember the mixing of low pass and clipping paths? Let's look at that. Here we have a small capacitor driving a large capacitor for the low frequency path. That makes the amplitude of that path 20 dB lower than it needs to be. This network also creates a high pass for driving the clipping stage. I pull these paths apart, driving each one individually, all while maintaining time constants, crucial for clone behavior and tone. The diode section is also interesting. Note the time constant driving diodes is quite a high pass filter, preventing the diodes from affecting low frequencies. Another point is that the diodes start to conduct and become part of the sound much earlier than you think. They become active with gain as low as 9 o'clock and are part of that clean sound with a sparkly push. A dirty climb at high gain is actually caused by the clipping path op amp saturating. The circuit runs out of headroom. I believe this is to mimic the response of an overdriven tube amplifier. And what about those magical diodes? Are germanium types truly that much better? Well, they do offer up a much softer clip. Fortunately, we can recreate this soft clipping by adding some resistance in series with a silicon diode. Here's a measure comparison between the silicon diode and three germanium diodes in series. Note that response characteristics are virtually identical, especially over the range used in a clone. I ended up using 1N4148 types with a low value resistor to soften the clipping in the neoclon. Finally, a note about charge pumps and noise. These are very harsh circuits that dump a ton of noise onto power supply rails, which often shows up in the output. Here's a little secret. You can quiet these supplies down by adding a 10 ohm resistor in series with these two flying capacitors. Bam! Let's look at wave shapes. From what I found, using a 200 Hz square wave input shows off frequency response and nonlinear transient characteristics extremely well. Everything shows up on the oscilloscope screen. Here I compare low, medium, and high gain modes. Note that neoclon waveforms are near exact copies of the clon, proving that my new circuit does the job. The main difference is at maximum gain, where the clon runs out of headroom and just gets stuck, acting like a hard limiter. 
The Neoclon has double the headroom prior to hard clipping, so you may have to compensate with the level control. At the same time, thanks to improved gain distribution, the noise floor, hiss, has dropped dramatically as well. Tonality is more commonly shown using a frequency response plot. Here you can compare a reference clone pedal to both my Neoclone and Tube Clone at lower gain. Pretty good matches. Now that I had created this new circuit topology, I could focus on how to implement using a tube. The Tube Clone is a very different circuit, replacing diode clipping with tube clipping and op amp clipping with tube clipping. No op amps are used in the circuit, just five transistors and two triads. All time constants were impedance scaled and dialed in for clone type performance. Waveforms at low gain are perfect. Comparing 1 kHz sine wave inputs, clipping of tube clone is dramatically different in that you get real tube clipping, not some shark fin artificial interpretation. There is also quite a bit of sag for more tube-like feel and articulation. Another look at body plots and you can see just how close the clone and tube clone are. Control settings are not quite exact as I gave up on minimum gain flat bandwidth capability and increased headroom. Using my Notoclone as reference, volume and treble are set to noon. This chart shows equivalent settings for equal output signal amplitude. Measured noise floor of tube clone is 12 dB quieter than my Notoclone reference, while the Neoclone is a whopping 24 dB quieter. For those of you do, who don't like high levels of hiss, this is important. What else is significant about the tube clone? Well, I designed it to be pedal friendly. It all fits, including the tube, inside a 1590BB enclosure, similar in size to the original. It doesn't get hot either, as the tube is operated at very low power levels such that it should last decades. Most importantly, is that the tube clone runs off a standard 9 volt power consuming a mere 130 milliamps so there is no need for a special or extra supply. That's friendly. It's plug and play. All you'll, you do have to wait 30 seconds for the tube to warm up. Both Neoclon and Tube Clone are now available at my website for purchasing. They come as partial kits just like a Nautoclon. So you will have to complete assembly yourself. No soldering or special tools are required. Mahalo for listening.